so funny. So funny. She's had enough. <laughs> We had an appointment at the hospital <clears throat> and they were a bit worried about the size of Pip's belly or something so they had did a scan and they decided that the best path would be to induce the baby and to induce Pip. So we went in Friday morning, they were like, oh, I'll come back tomorrow, we'll do it in the morning, like very casually, we're like, oh, okay, well, we'll freak it out. <laughs> and then uh, we rolled in Friday morning, we're like, oh, um, yeah, we're here to get induced, um, you know. We're here to have this baby, and they're like, oh, we're pretty busy at the minute. You want to come, go get a coffee and come back at 11? People are just pulling their hair out, we're freaking out, and then went down the road, had a coffee, and we're just looking at each other going, this is the last time we're going to be just the two of it ever. Like, it was pretty crazy. Things started to unfold from 1 o'clock onwards, and it was super quick labour. Um, Pitt was a star. Full credit to, to women and what they go through. You know, I was in the thick of the action, and... Yeah, it was pretty amazing. I've seen a human body do some pretty cool things and um, this is by far the best thing I've ever seen. It was absolutely incredible. Pitt went and had a shower and then I got a chance to cuddle her. It's just like, it's, it's real now. Like, it's gone from being in her belly and just being like, oh, you're pregnant, like, to being like, shit, I've got a kid, like, I've got a daughter. This is a poo position, isn't it? You do all your poos. It was about two o'clock in the morning. Um, Elle's water broke, and um, obviously, like first baby, we both didn't really know what was going on. So Elle kind of woke me up, and she's like, "Oh, I think my waters have broke." And I was like, "Shit, what do we do now? Like, do we need to go to the hospital?" She's like, "Oh, let's just play it low and, and see how we go." And um, I went back to sleep, pretty much like that. And that poor Elle was kind of freaking out, but um, she woke me up a little bit after that, and she's like, "Oh, I think." I just spoke to the hospital and they said to come in and we'll kind of see um, how everything's tracking and stuff. So drove her there and I was kind of freaking out. I was driving at the time and we we're going down the freeway and my speedo was creeping up. She's like, just slow down, relax, it's all right, it's not coming. I just didn't want to deliver it in the car. So <laughs> I was trying to get back to the hospital ASAP. They kind of done all the tests and um, they sent us home at about 5.30 in the morning and said the contractions aren't quite getting strong enough. At about four or five o'clock in the arvo, we kind of had to go back because the they were getting stronger and obviously the nurse had a feel around. She's like, oh, I can feel the baby. So next time you get contractions, start pushing. So, and then it felt like it went like that. So, um, and then yeah, he was born at about 10 to eight that, that night. So we kind of all had a hold together and you just feel this connection straight away. Like it's something you can't really describe, but it's just a, such a cool feeling and, and knowing that you know, the little baby's yours and um, yeah, you kind of finally get to meet him. So obviously he was kicking around and hurting his mum there for a while, but um, yeah, when you finally get to hold him and, and meet him and cuddle him, it's, yeah, it's just such an awesome feeling. Big girl. Just kind of changed my perspective on things. It was pretty crazy. And um, yeah, just started thinking about you know, less selfishly about things. Obviously, you got to be pretty selfish as an athlete, and um, yeah, now there's, you think about those things. You think about providing for your family and your daughter, and um, yeah, it kind of adds that extra layer of motivation. And you know, obviously, all the other things are still super important, um, but these things come along and trump them all. So, I feel like you kind of get a bit more of a routine in, like when you obviously you know, kind of don't have responsibilities at home or anything. You kind of feel like you roll into training and you can't wait to get home and you kind of, you know, just go through the motions where you kind of, now you, you have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning and you just kind of find a, a way to do it. And obviously when training finishes, yeah, you just can't wait to kind of finally go home to a little family and kind of opens up your views and your perception and on how you look at life. And yeah, I can't wait to kind of, Obviously, whether you have a bad bad game or bad loss or, or something like that, but you still know you can kind of go home to your family and, and be happy and, and kind of switch your focus. Instead of overthinking it, you can move away from footy and, and start thinking family and being the best dad you can. So. Say hello. Hello. Hi, dear. Hi. Hello. 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 2018 was a bit of a frustrating year. Well, a very frustrating year for me, um, personally. 
Uh, it was about this time last year I had a knee scope and a lot of bone bruising and then uh, had a bit of a interrupted pre-season and then came back and got fit for the JLT series and played the first three rounds. And I guess probably coming off a limited preparation, my body probably was a little bit underdone and then went down with a stress fracture in my back. So um, that was pretty tough to swallow, but you know I thought I'd only be out for eight weeks or whatever, 10 weeks it, it ended up being. And, Worked my way back from that and um, the boys are enduring a bit of a tough run there in the middle of the year and you know weren't having a great season. So it was kind of hard watching from behind the glass there in the gym and um, you know I really wanted to, to help contribute and and then yeah I was at training and uh, I was unfortunately in a pretty big collision uh, which you don't expect to have on a Thursday's training before the Port Adelaide game and I was going for the ball, I was on the ball only and Huey Goddard, who trains quite hard, uh, was coming back, steaming back with the flight and had this big collision and my leg just absolutely killed. I was just like, oh, I thought it was the worst cork I've ever had, right? I'm just like, yeah, I was just like, oh, my leg is just like, oh, I was trying to hobble off and because I just got picked back in the team. I was like, oh, I think it's all right. I think it's all right. I was like, oh, I'll try and run it off. I'm hobbling on the sideline. The adrenaline had worn off a bit and it killed so bad. Went into the shower, started crying. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and then just got an x-ray. And from a football sense and a season sense, I'd been dealt a pretty big blow. But as soon as I left the club each day and I was driving back home, I was just, just made, put a smile on my face thinking, you know, we've got a kid on the way. And, um, you know, what's it going to be like? What's it going to look like? Is it going to be a boy or a girl? You know, it was all very exciting. And, um, we'd wa I'd walk in the door and completely forget about um, my injuries and uh, anything else that was kind of going on. So it was a really good break, um, pardon the pun, <laughs> from, uh, from footy and from everything. It was really nice. Again, it's Kent. What will he do this time? The airing down was Jamison. Doesn't affect the kick, though. That's terrific. Yeah, I remember my first game because it was against Chris Judd and he was probably my idol. So um, I was a sub, so it was a substitute game. And in the first quarter, um, Jack Grimes done his hamstring and I, I wasn't quite ready, but I was ready and I had to kind of come in in the first probably six minutes. I only got four touches, but um, yeah, it was a cool experience. And then my first handshake was Chris Judd. So I, he was like over on the wing and I had to run over and kind of shake his hand just to make sure I said I shook his hand. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> Measures it from 49 metres. He's got three. It's kind of hard not to think about that you're out of contract and as long as, you know, like I kind of went out there and said, oh, I'm not thinking about it, but personally I kind of was, and it probably um, dummy head in a little bit. Um, Anzac Eve game, I'd done my hamstring. Um, the D's at the time took a kind of careful approach to that and took a while to get back into it, and then got back into the ones and um, kind of felt really comfortable and um, felt really happy and obviously done my AC joint, but Probably halfway through the year, you kind of got to start thinking about, um, you know, like yourself and keep an open mind to, to be where you're going to be next year. And um, it was probably late when the Saints come and spoke to me and we kind of had a little meeting and went through, obviously, the direction of the, um, the Saints wanted to go and the journey and um, what recruits, um, other recruits they were looking at. So it was pretty cool. And, you know, two years ago, it was the D's and Saints finished 10th and 9th or something. So um, I felt like, you know, the clubs were pretty similar and I feel like Saints footy is just around the corner and me personally as well, I can bring so much to the club and I can bring a bit of speed and bring a bit of toughness around in the forward line and some pressure and stuff. And, um, you know, obviously at the D's, I was kind of in and out and I, I wanted to come here and kind of make my presence and, and be in the best 22 and play the footy that I think I, I can still play. So from that day, I thought, yeah, I'm actually a real chance to kind of go to the Saints and I wanted to be a part of that. And obviously me and my partner, Elle, we're going to have a little family now. And, um, you know, when the Saints come forward with three years, um, it was pretty much a no-brainer, but it was something I wanted to be a part of here. First week's a little bit nerve-wracking. You kind of try and mingle around, you float around, and see kind of you know what kind of groups there are and stuff like that. But 
Um, you know, now I'm kind of set in and, and we're kind of going into Christmas, so I feel real settled. And me and Joshy Battle have got a mutual friend in James Harms. So when he first um, come through the door, he kind of, you know, shook me hand like we we're best mates type thing. And, and that was pretty cool, obviously, knowing that I was going to be a locker mate with him as well. So he kind of made me feel real welcome and um, part of it pretty well. And bloody all over my locker and his shits everywhere and his boots and his bloody nicking me shorts and stuff like that. But that's all part of it. So I'll keep him on his toes and he'll probably keep me on mine. So it's cool. Obviously a lot of guys would be smarting from the season we had last year, you know. That hurts, it hurts the pride. And you know, boys would be wanting to rectify that while guys still had strong seasons individually. You know, people want to help the team improve and help the team make finals and help us win the flag. So. Um, you can see the recruiting team have gone for boys that are going to help us win next year, which is, which is great on their behalf. And um, you know, some of the things that Billy Slater has said is, you know, you, you guys talk about these plans and you talk about, you know, the future. Like, where is it still storm? You know, they never spoke about that. They just they spoke about one, we're going to win it next year. Like, let's win it next year, and they they did pretty much all the time. So um, yeah, I mean, guys have really bought in and physically and. Younger guys are maturing, hitting their straps and pushing us older boys and some of the really old boys are pushing us even further, like Brownie, like he's going bananas in his 15th or 14th year. It's just like, yeah, you've got to keep reinventing yourself in this game, so. Rats has made an immediate impact. He's, uh, he's bloody awesome, to be honest. He's come in with a whole bunch of fresh ideas. He's obviously coached his own side. He played 250 odd games. He <coughs> spent five years with the, the maestro Clarkson. You know, he's an experienced head. He's got fresh ideas. And the boys have really responded well to that. I think, you know, some of the ideas that are coming through from him and Lady. You know, it's a really fun vibe, really fresh around the club, doing all sorts of new things. Um, it's really motivating to have guys like that that are so energetic about the game even still and you just, you know, it's, it makes you want to go to work every day. So yeah, it's been good, it's been really good.